spread it like. All right, uh, welcome back. So we're taking a look at Pixelcraft Space Shooter again. Uh, again, this is what it looks like from Absolute Games. If I press play. Again, I just want you guys to notice how the control works. So if I move my finger, the ship doesn't move to my finger. And that does a couple things. First of all, it allows you to actually see your ship for the most part when you're playing, which is kind of important because you can see how cool your ship looks. Also, it allows you to dodge projectiles better, but mainly the coolness. Uh, also, if I move my finger, it's not a one-to-one -one movement the ship has. The ship moves a little bit more up than I move my finger up, and it moves a little bit more down than I move my finger down. Also, if you notice, the hitbox is pretty generous. It's nice and tiny on this, just like we made our hitbox a little smaller. So I'm getting really close to these, and it's not counting as a hit, unless I did that. Okay, so let's talk about the math behind how we can create this. So, uh, essentially what we want to do is imagine we've got our phone screen here so that I can explain one way to do it. And this is only my way of doing it. I'm far from an expert. So if you come up with a different way or somebody tells you that my way's bad, it might be. Uh, but let's just talk about how I would do it. So what we're going to have is we're going to keep track of where um, a person clicks on the screen. And Unity treats a left mouse button click the same way it would a finger tap. So let's say somebody taps their finger here. What we want to do is keep track of this position. We'll call this the first position. We want to keep track of where that was and kind of store it for a minute. And then as somebody moves their finger, like say they move it up here, over here, down there, we want to keep track of all of these other positions as well. And we'll call these like end position or something like that. Now, each of these is going to have an XY coordinate. So if I touch the screen here, let's say that this has an XY coordinate of 3, 3. And I move my finger down to here. Let's say this has an XY coordinate of 4, 2. I want to keep track of the difference in the X's and the difference in the Y's. So in this case, my difference of the X's, so I'll call that my X difference, and I'll abbreviate that because I'm lazy. My X difference would be 4 minus 3, which is 1. And then my Y difference is going to be 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. So I have an X difference of 1, meaning going to the right one, and I have a Y difference of negative 1, meaning going down 1. Now if I left it like this, I could just add that to my ship's position, have it move right 1, down 1, which would just, it would move just in a nice neat diagonal line. But that would be 1 to 1. If I wanted my ship to go all the way to the top of the screen, I'd have to reach all the way to the top of the screen. And with modern phones, that's kind of difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these differences and I'm going to multiply them by uh, an amount which is going to be relatively small, somewhere between 1 and 2, to make it so that if I move this much, the ship will move a little bit more than that. Uh, okay, so this is kind of a good framework for what we want to keep track of. Oh yeah, we also want to keep track of where the ship currently is. So we'll call that current position. And where we want the ship to go. So if we're going like this, we want the ship to go a little bit farther down than we were moving our finger. We'll call this one the target position. So this is kind of a good, um, almost a skeleton for what we're going to be doing in our code to start with. So let's jump back to Unity here. Here's our project where we left off. Uh, I'm going to go into my scripts folder, right click, Create. I'm going to create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call this player movement. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to attach that to the player ship. So, sometimes if you're adding a lot of components to an object in Unity, it can get really crowded. You probably won't need to look at the sprite renderer or the collider again for a little while, or the rigid body. So, we can just window shade those. And then, if I want to attach the script, I can just pull it over. If for some reason it's not pulling over, if you go to Add Component, you can scroll down, and you can choose Scripts. And then that'll allow you to choose any script that's currently in your game. Okay, so let's open up this script. I'm using Visual Studio, but you can use MonoDevelop. They're very, very similar to each other as far as Unity's C-sharp code goes. MonoDevelop is a little less predictive than Visual Studio is. And Visual Studio tends to be more helpful with 
uh, braces and brackets. So it's just kind of whichever one you prefer. If you downloaded Unity, you're going to have MonoDevelop, and that's totally fine. So once this loads up, we'll get started. OK, so I've already kind of embiggened it for you guys so you can see it. What I'm going to do first is create some global variables. And these are variables that can be used in any method inside this class. So the script is a class, and start and update and any other method we create can use global variables that are declared outside of a method. And to keep things neat, we'll leave them up here. So again, let's talk about what we needed to do. So we're going to do uh, the mouse's first position and its end position. So those are vector twos. And there's no reason for those, them to be public, so we'll make them private. So private vector two, we'll do uh, mouse first position, private vector two, mouse end position. And it's going to keep track of the xy coordinates where the mouse began and where it ended. Uh, we're going to do where the ship begins and ends. So private vector two. We'll do player start position. And private vector two player target position. So those are those four kind of points that I talked about. And the other two things I talked about was a control multiplier, which is what we're going to multiply by and an x difference and a y difference. So let's add those here as well. And these are, yeah, the differences are going to be private as well. If you don't need something to be public, it's best to make it private by default. You can always go back and change it. So we'll say private x diff. Uh, actually, no, sorry. <laughs> Got to call decide what kind of variable this is. This is going to be a float, which is just a decimal number in Unity. Unity prefers using floats to doubles. If you're used to programming in Java, that might be just a little weird. I'm also going to do private float y difference. And then one more float, and we're done with our variables. Uh, this one is going to be public float, and I'm going to call it control multiplier. I know a lot of people don't like using these great long variable names. Um, it just works best for me. A lot of people will do like PSPOS or something like that for player start position, uh, or they'll abbreviate this some more. I like using long variable names because it's not that big of a deal as far as memory goes, and it helps you remember what I'm doing if I come back to my code days or weeks later. Uh, all right, so I don't need to do anything in the start method right now. What I do need to do, though, is add some stuff in the update method. So if you're unfamiliar with Unity, update runs once per frame. Depending on how fast your game is running, uh, each frame could be 1 30th of a second, 1 15th of a second, or 1 60th of a second. If it's a 2D game, it's going to be running really fast. So I'm going to say if, and I want to check to see if the mouse button is down. I'm going to say if input.get mouse button down, and then I have to tell it which mouse button, zero. By default, zero is the left mouse button. And then I'm going to do some code here. This is one of those things that uh, Visual Studio does that MonoDevelop doesn't. Visual Studio created this end brace here. Um, you can download the community version for free if you don't like Mono Develop. And then I'm going to do else if input dot get mouse button up. So I want to check to see if the left mouse button is up next. All right. So let me kind of explain this a little bit over here. So if I jump back to the paper. So if they press down then that means that they're touching the screen, which means they want to control the ship. If they let up, that means they're stopped controlling the ship, and the ship should stay where it is. So I'm going to create one more variable here, and I'm going to call that is controlling. And this is going to be what's called a Boolean. It's something that's either true or false. So if you're touching the screen, you want to control the ship. If you let up, you don't want to control the ship. So I'm going to jump back to Uni or not Unity, Visual Studio. I'm going to create one more variable. And if you notice, a lot of variables already, this kind of global variable space can get really cluttered. We can talk about something that you can do to make it uh, easier to read and a little neater. So let's do 
I'm going to make this one public because I want to see if it's working. I'm going to do public bool is controlling. And I want is controlling to default to be false. So in the start method, which is called as soon as the game starts up, I'm going to say is controlling equals false. All right. So when they press the button down or when they tap the screen, I want to set is controlling to true equals true. And when they let up, I want to set it back to false. Is controlling equals false. So our logic behind this is if they tap the screen or use the left mouse button, then they want to control the ship. If they let go of the left mouse button or let up from the screen, they don't want to control the ship anymore. So make sure that you're using get mouse button down, not get mouse button, that's different, and get mouse button up and not get mouse button. Those are three different methods that mean different things. So once they touch down, so again, if I jump back over here, as soon as you touch down, we want to record this first position. And I also want to record the current position of the player. So I want to record those two things right away. So if I go back here, I'm going to say, what I call it, mouse first position? Yeah. Mouse first position is equal to and some people want to jump right to input dot mouse position. There's a problem with that, and I'll show you in just a second. But I also want to store the player's position. So I'm going to say player start position is equal to transform dot position. If you don't say which transform you're calling, if you see transform position like that, then it's the transform position of whichever object this script is attached to. So. Uh, I'm going to add just a little debug statement down here so that you can check this out. So I can show you why that mouse position is wrong. So debug.log, and I just want to do mouse first position, which will just display the vector of the mouse first position. So I'm going to save my script, and I'm going to pop back into Unity here. If I click on my player, after Unity is done compiling, this little circle down here means it's compiling. Uh, if I click on my player, I can see my public bool of his controlling is true, and it defaults to false, and my control multiplier. I'm going to set that to 2, just to start out. If you haven't done anything with it, um, if you have any debug log, or any debug statements, those get printed to something called the console. If I go up here to window, the very, very last one is the console. I'm going to dock this right next to my game, and any errors you have are if it's a yellow flag, it's something that might be an error. So like in this case, we have something that we assigned but we never used. We'll fix that in a minute. So if I go to the game here and press play, I just want to click anywhere on the screen just to verify that one that is controlling is going to click down, which if you see over there in the inspector, is controlling is down. And if I let up, it's up. The other thing I want to look at is the position it recorded. So first it recorded 123.84, which is a little weird because up here in the scene view, the camera is at 0, 0. So if I click kind of in the center, you'd expect it to be 0, 0, but it's not. Instead, by default, these mouse, mouse clicks will reflect the pixel coordinate that we just touched on. We want to change those pixel coordinates to Unity World coordinates. So if we go into our Visual Studio here, um, I'm going to put this input dot mouse position in parentheses. This is one place that Visual Studio is annoying because as soon as you open a parentheses, it thinks you immediately want to end it. Uh, so we'll put input dot mouse position in the parentheses and we want to use this method, which is complicated, but it's camera dot main dot screen to world point. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the pixel coordinate or the screen coordinate and change it into a world point. So I can take this debug statement out. We don't need that anymore. Okay, so when the player pushes down the mouse button, uh, they get turned into the controlling state. The mouse first position is recorded, and the position of the player is recorded. If they let up on the mouse button, then they're not controlling. So we're going to use this is controlling variable to create another conditional statement. We're going to say if is controlling. So if that's true. So if you're doing an if-then statement with a boolean, you don't have to say is equal to true. You can just, is controlling means true. 
not as controlling me. It's false. So then in here, I'm going to say my uh, mouse end position is equal to, I'm going to use this same long string I used up here. So instead of retyping it, I might as well just copy it. So copy and paste. Um, then what I want to do is I want to find the difference on the x-axis and the difference on the y-axis. So x difference is equal to now the x difference, just like over here, when I found the x difference I did the x coordinate of this position, which is the last one, minus the x coordinate of this position, which was the first one, and the y difference was this minus this. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Back in monitor up. So I'm going to say x difference is equal to mouse end position dot x, which is the x coordinate of that, minus mouse first position dot x. Now I want to multiply this by that control multiplier, so I'm going to encapsulate this in parentheses. And MonoDevelop is going to think I want to do two parentheses when I do this beginning one, which is it, or not MonoDevelop, Visual Studio. So I'm going to put this in parentheses, and then I want to multiply it by one, actually, control multiplier, because I already created that variable. Uh, okay, I'm going to copy this line here, and in either MonoDevelop or Visual Studio, if you triple click, it highlights the line. So I'll control uh, copy. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Let me fix that really quickly. There we go. I will copy the line, which I already did, and paste it down here. I'm going to change all my x's to y's. So it's y difference, mouse end position dot y, mouse first position dot y, and still times control multiplier. OK. Now, the next thing I want to do is find my target position for my player. So we'll say target uh, player target position, cool, is equal to a new vector 2. And I have to have two floats for this. So my first float is going to be the player's current position on the x-axis plus the x difference. So I'm taking their current x position and adding the x difference, which I just found, which is the difference between the two already multiplied by the control multiplier. And then I want to do transform.position.y plus y difference. OK. Now the last thing I have to do is just have the uh, program move the player in between these two positions, their original position their first position, and their target position. And to do that, I'm going to use a method called lerp, which sounds super weird. It means a linear interpolation. So I'm going to take the player's position, so transform.position. Remember, this is attached to the player. So whenever I call that, it's the player's position. It's equal to vector2.lerp. And vector2.lerp requires start position and end position and a percentage you want to travel. So if you set this percentage to 1, it would mean 100%. So in one frame, it would travel 100% of the distance and just jump right there. I'm going to set it to something low, like 20%. So it'll take you know a few frames for it to get there. So the two positions I wanted to transform between are its current position, transform.position, and its target position. So player target position, and I'm going to use 0.2 for my smoothing here. Uh, oh, 0.2f. If you don't automatically say it's a float, it assumes it's a double. And Unity doesn't like double, Unity likes float. So I'm going to save my script. I'm going to jump back into Unity here. Wait for it to compile. Uh, Alright, cool. Hit play. And down here, I will treat my mouse like it's uh, a finger on a touch screen. Move up. That's a little janky. Let's fix that. So back again. Sorry for all the, the weird edits. Um, but this should give you an idea of what debugging stuff is like. It's frustrating. OK, so my problem is here in the player target position. Um, 
I need to not take the current position of the player. I need to take the start position of the player. So we'll do player start position dot x and player start position dot y and not be using the transform. The reason the transform is making it move like that is because transform changes every frame. So it's taking the transform that it was and then it is doing this kind of accelerating thing, which is why it was looking so weird and floaty. So if we jump back into Unity here, wait for it to compile, I'm going to hit play in just a second. Maybe. There we go. All right. So check my control multiplier. There we go. That's much better. Look at how nice and fluid that is. So if this were your hand, uh, let's change our control multiplier here. Let's make it something bigger, like 1.5. Then if I were to, like if I had my, the ship started down here, and I had my thumb here, I can move it, not quite. I need to do bigger than 1.5. Let's check two. Remember that any changes you make in when it's in play mode like this, they aren't gonna save, so I'm gonna have to remember that. So instead, I got my finger here. Yeah, I can easily get to the top of the screen just by reaching about halfway up. That's good. Now there's an issue here, which we'll just talk about clamping in just a second, but that's good for now. All right, uh, so we set up a basic control scheme that will work with touchscreen devices or with mice. Um, thank you very much. Have a great day. Be sure to ask me any questions in the comments if you need to. And yeah, hope this finds you well.